Good afternoon, welcome to today's video. I'm with Rob, we're heading to his workshop and he's got some more 3D printed bike parts. You all right? It's still there, mate. All the bits have come off my cleat because I like slipped on a traffic light. So I'm basically ice skating. All the bits come off. You need some new glutes. So I'm like skating on the floor every time I try and walk. DPD thought it'd be really cool to sit on my box of wheels <laughs> before delivering them. They totally destroyed. So this, this tape isn't meant to be on the box. Although to be fair, DPD are really nasty to the couriers, aren't they? Are they? Well, they're all on like zero contracts. Oh man. Kind of like Uber drivers. Super cool wheels. Chris King. The really interesting thing is the rim. A-Force. Uh, the A-Force uh, AL33. Uh, they spent like loads of money uh, and time researching how to make the most aerodynamic aluminium uh, rim. Now, <clears throat> aluminium is a great material, but obviously you can't make it as deep. Uh, without it getting too heavy. Without it getting too heavy. Yeah. These weigh 430, I think, which is pretty decent for aluminium rim. 33 mil deep, and according to the data, more aerodynamic than a per zip 303. Big claim. Big claim! I might have made that up, <laughs> but look on the website. Super, and they're super tough because of aluminium. Not that carbon isn't tough, but I mean, more durable. Perhaps, yeah. perhaps. But these are going back to get trued up. Thank you, DPD! <laughs> Is there anything exciting up here? Oh, there's a load of weird shit going on out here. Oh, yeah! It's a pair of giant hands and a headless bunny yeah, and a, and a, a decapitated gnome. With a sign saying Telford Holmes ain't my gnome. So, look at the size of that chain ring. Is it 114th? Yeah. What's that for? Going 100 miles per hour on a bike. Look at that bad boy. All road for an Australian customer. Based in the UK though. Was that cold coatings? That is cold coating. That's very nice. How can I use anyone other but them? Like, look at that. Did you let cold coatings just do what they wanted? A little bit. The guy. Um, a vague idea. Is there painting that goes on here as well? Yeah, yeah. This is a spray booth. This brief was Alpen Glow, which is in dusk and twilight in the mountains in the Alps. You get this rose-coloured hue. Mm -hmm that hits the mountains, just lights them all up. So that that was his brief for this too. Yeah. And again, it's sort of like, oh no, actually he got his friend to design it. So he put out maybe six designs and we all we all discussed and said, I think that won't be best. So that's one we went with, Cold Coatings did it. 3D parts. Yeah, I wanna see, have you got them finished? They're here. Oh, they're on. So you may remember from a few episodes back, uh, Rob was 3D printing some bike parts and he just had the prototypes or the samples uh, done in plastic. Now we've got the steel ones. It's really cool. Yeah. So this is before they'd be cleaned up. So you still got the rough marks from where it's been sintered because uh, it's made from a powder. But they sinter the powder into the shape. Pretty cool. If you've ever seen it happening, it's like you literally have a pile of powder and this laser hitting it and then pieces just form out of it's it's crazy it's like something from the future yeah it, it's kind of like cast marks when you used to cast things Can't they just need cleaning up because some of them at the moment will show through in paint if there's a 40 mil cutter so the tire would sit out there so we've got plenty of room either side and that's using straight stays really clean classic lines may try doing stuff with curved seat stays that would be more to add a bit of spring yeah. In the back. Seat stays are never the limiting factor uh, on tire size. Uh, the limiting factor is where you have your chain stays up against your chain ring. When you're trying to squeeze a big tire in there, you basically want to get your chain stays further out, but then you're going to start ring. hitting chain rings. That's why dropped chain stays got developed. You can see this dropout actually points further down. Uh, this version is designed to be mated with a dropped chain stay. Action. So I felt like it was in a porn movie though. <laughs> Let's film you pointing at him. Don't put that in I'm the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two ways. I can TIG this. TIGging, it stands for tungsten inert gas. 
So you use a tungsten tip with an electrical arc and an inert gas is argon that stops it oxidising. TIG welding is an actual welding method where the difference between welding and brazing is welding you actually fuse two metals together so you're using an electrical arc to melt them. Whereas brazing, which is uh, what this is, is technically not welding uh, because you don't melt the two uh, base metals together. Uh, so, for instance, the chainstay and the BB, still two separate pieces. You use brass filler. So that's what. So they're fusing to the brass rather than each other. Yeah. It's, oh wow. Essentially, it's high temperature soldering. And it's not quite as strong as TIG. Brazed frames have a longer fatigue life, and the reason for that is when you're brazing, you ha your heat affected zone is larger. If you imagine the strength of the metal plotted on a graph, as you get closer to the weld, it will go very brittle, very hard, and then soft, and then back to normal as it gets to the weld. With brazing, that's spread out over uh, a bigger area with TIG concentrated in small, and that's why when you see frames fail with TIG welding, it tends to be outside the weld because you've made that area very brittle and concentrating. So with brazing, your fatigue life is longer, but with TIG welding, it's a stronger bond. So things, that's why TIG welding is really popular on mountain bikes, because when you're smashing it off the side of like hills and rocks and stuff, it's, it's really strong, it will hold together. But to be fair, it's kind of horses for courses because they're both strong. When you get to the point where they're going to fail, it's like, it doesn't really matter how it's, it's going. Gonna it's it's going to fail. fail. It's like, uh, so that's why you get brazed mountain bikes and that's why you get TIG welded uh, road bikes. When uh, you say fatigue life, do you, is a steel <coughs> frame destined to eventually fail with regular use? Uh, you need to look after it, so protect it from corrosion. Steel will naturally oxidize like just the moisture in the air will make that happen. But that's not necessarily, that's not corrosion. No. Uh, so, so what does cause corrosion? If, if I left it out in the rain, would that make a difference? Yeah, like pooling water yeah. is what it do. So say if you didn't have a drain hole in your BB and loads of water pooled. And just in sat the, there inside. And just yeah. sat there. And that is the condition where it will like eat through. Or things like when you have high salt environments. So for instance, in Australia, uh, a lot of the cities near the sea, it's very dry, but you have a lot of salt coming in off from the sea air, and that's kind of not very good. So you need, you need to use like rust inhibitors to protect the inside of the frame. And if you do that, like it will last Forever. For a very long time, a lifetime, yeah. yeah. I've seen some, like when I used to work in a bike shop, people would bring their bikes in for a service that were being used for turbo training and they'd been sweating and sweating and sweating, like salty sweat onto their <laughs> component tree at the front and the stems, like the bolts in the stems, they'd be literally falling apart from yeah. corrosion. Yeah. It's nuts. Salt, really. That's how I destroyed destroys. my last camera. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, exactly. You, you broke your camera, uh, sweating into it. Hey, Mr. Heater. Oh, that's his face. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good face that is good you went straight oh. i like how you knew straight away where the face was yeah because I've, I've been looking at that so much and being like hello have you, have you seen this 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 is amazing the jig i'm building on is the bicycle academy's low cost frame fixture because before I, I was working on a prototype aluminium jig but it's always having little issues with alignment especially on the rear end the problem is something like, like this is uh, an anvil so anyone who knows anything about frame building jigs and stuff will know like this is considered the creme de la creme oh. but they're quite expensive so i think they cost about four and a half five grand this one Cost 850 quid. You can see the difference, but Bargain, mate. you're like, well. I might buy one. Oh, I don't I mean, know what it does, but I'll just have it in my house. Does it come with the face? Yeah, it does. It comes with him. Yeah, yeah, this is what it comes with. Absolute so this bargain. is. This one's built around off the shelf steel extrusion. And this one is built out of precision machined aluminium. The more accurate you get machining something, the more expensive it gets. This has absolutely no accuracy. Well, the genius thing that Bike Academy came up with was like, we're not even going to pretend the jig is straight, but we're going to give you the tool to make it straight. So you slide it on. I'm getting a bit shaky from the sugar. The Rio. My Rio. And a whole loaf of bread that we just and ate. And what happens is I go, Pew! so you can see the laser uh, lines up with the notch. So that's how you get it in you know, the plane. It's straight. 
and then put your face move it up the line oh you're bang on there you can change the tilt so that will make the head tube straight and same thing so this way oh. you, you can build a jig out of completely non-precision parts keeping the cost really low down but then design into it a feature to align it but so it's amazing and it's something that because uh, you're like dropping five six grand on a jig is a lot of money i was gonna do a cool sequence of your frame mate I'd like to it's doing a disco tried hitting it with a hammer <laughs> just hit it that always works well it is home time for me <sighs> gotta get an hour and a half train Look who I found. If I cycled, I wouldn't get there on time. Me and Jimmy are going to have a fight. What? Um, oh yeah, last time we were here, you, there was a fight. Do you remember? I th well, I thought we'd fight other people, not like I was sat like... Oh, fight yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a lazy weekend. Well, I've had, I've had like... Um, I heard you did an FTP test. I did, I did. It's um, offensively low. It's still, do you know what, like watts per kilo, it's not that bad. I have to remember that like people of our stature you only weigh 20 kilos yeah 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 it's, it's three watts per kilo which obviously isn't great but considering i've done no training like structured training whatsoever in about three years i'm quite content with it you've probably only ridden your bike three times exactly so considering that's basically bikes? like my base no no it was my running ftp rob doesn't actually ride bikes but he just dresses like that so <laughs> yeah. people think he does yeah. i've walked all the way here in speed <laughs> my train is coming what 421 yeah Oh god, it is four. It feels like about eight o'clock because it's dark. I was like, 4.21? What time zone is your phone on?